you know, I think we've had a great conversation, um, you know, about e-commerce point of view. I'd love to also, Demir, get your opinion from, from the VC point of view. You know, um, how do you how do you consider these online shopping experiences and you know what differences do you see in the user experience between web stores that use headless and web stores that don't um and you know what what does that mean for you as someone who is analyzing consumer trends and um really making a career on 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 figuring out what's valuable within those trends you know how, how do you see these things I'd say when we invest in brands in general, we want to find brands that have very sticky relationships with their customers and brands that themselves demonstrate great unit economics. And I think how a storefront is built ties, ties into that pretty tremendously, right? Is this a storefront that is highly converting? Is it a storefront that consumers want to spend time on? Are they actually you know, discovering all of the products that you have on offer? Are they consuming the content that you want consumers to, to engage with? Um, so I guess tying into like specifics of, of what I look for when, when we meet with brands, uh, the first is speed is luxury, right? Uh, when you land on a fast storefront, uh, it just feels like a brand that has its stuff together. I was going to use another word, but I think stuff <laughs> is, is, is the appropriate one. Um, whereas if I'm landing on a storefront of a brand that, you know, is taking five seconds from to load from one page to the next, um, I lose trust in the brand, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to transact with them. I, I'm not sure if it's a product that I'm going to like um, because the storefront experience is so bad. How could the product be good? Um, so I think when you have a, a fast and performant storefront, you immediately start to think of the brand in, in, in a higher regard. Uh, the second thing is the actual journey itself, right? When, when a brand is using a template, templatized version of a storefront, again, I, I don't think it's elevated. I don't think it's special. Um, I'm less likely, in my opinion, to buy that product. It's when a brand has a very customized and unique um, consumer journey or customer journey, that's when I myself am, am more likely to buy. Um, and so how can, how can these brands enable that, right? How can they merge the, the content and the marketing story that they want to share very closely with, with the product and the transaction in a way that makes sense for their product category? Um, I was actually just looking at um, some Nacelle customers prior to this call. And I think someone like a Something Navy does this very well, right? Where you have this female lifestyle shopper, she's very bought into the brand, but she doesn't want to just look at, you know, a white backdrop photo of, of a product. She wants to understand how is this product going to fit into her lifestyle. And so she's consuming all of the social media, right? And, and something maybe puts all of the social posts very, very front and center on their storefront. And that's actually how the consumer is navigating to the product and ultimately making the transaction. And I think that's the type of example that will permeate across all brands or successful brands in the future is like, what, what is that special journey I want to take the consumer on when, when they land on my storefront. Um, and then lastly, let's take apparel as a category before apparel is all about seasonal collections, right? I make a line for fall. I make a line for winter. I make a line for spring. And you're really just trying to drive the consumer to the website when that collection is released. So four times a year. Well, that's not very sophisticated, right? Why is that a truism? It's an, it, I don't think it is anymore. Now, the way that um, these brands are establishing loyalty with their customers is by increasing the velocity of product drops. So now it's every Monday, new products are being dropped, or for some brands, every single day, new products are being dropped, which is a great mechanism to get someone back on your storefront and, and shopping. And, and that increases the loyalty of, of the customer in theory. So those are some of the things that, that we're, you know, very conscious of. Um, you know, these are again, reasons why I'm so excited about Nacelle because I view Nacelle as an enabler of, of all of this. Um, but curious to hear your view, Brian, do you think that merging content and commerce is really important? Do you think that speed elevates the brand? Yeah. I mean, for sure. I, I like how you positioned it. it. It's a luxury. It, it, you know, you, you can go to these e-commerce stores and some of them load slow and it, it, it does undermine or cheapen the brand to a certain degree. And it certainly doesn't inspire confidence. Um, it's, it's also, you know, a D2C brand I think is unique because 
their whole positioning and their whole brand has to be portrayed through their website. Um, and of course, you know, once you order the product and it comes and there's, you know, some, some great packaging and that experience should be wonderful. But um, before the customer buys, uh, the only shot you have for that first impression to go well is that first experience. And, and that is all the branding of, you know, the, the D2C marketer, they're, they're focused on that. Um, and so, yes, of course, like, I think you really very much should desire to, to leave a great first impression. Um, I think there's something else that happens too. It's funny when things load slower, um, folks have a, a smaller appetite to click around and explore, which is interesting. Um, yep. They, they, when, when things are intuitive and, and um, easy to navigate and things load quickly, it pulls you in because it's, it's psychological. There's not this break in your mindset. Um, you can kind of just flow and move kind of with the brand as you experience the catalog and the content. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think these are the things that are radically changing. Um, you know, when, when merchants think about their technology stack, it's okay, as a D2C um, group of marketers, how do we properly inject our brand to, to those, these new customers that are visiting our website for the first time? Yeah. And to tie into the, your speed point, I'll make a crude analogy. Um, if we had to wait 15 seconds for every TikTok video to load, <laughs> consumers would not use TikTok as much. But TikTok pre-buffers all of the videos. So when you swipe from one to the next, you're just jumping straight into the content. So I think I think that's a rough analogy to what you're saying about e-commerce, but you're right. As you as you navigate through a storefront, you know, you shouldn't have to wait. Um, it's a terrible experience. Yeah. So, so I think the takeaway is the faster it loads, the more time you spend relating to, well, a TikTok feed or, you know, the brand's content. Absolutely.